Okay, here it is. It is Wednesday, and it is a new episode of The Grail. The Grail. Episode number 12, I believe. Yes, it is. It is 12. And uh, good news this week. The Grail had bounced up to the top 10 on iTunes, which was absolutely incredible. If you want to keep the uh, grail up there in the top 10, top 20 or whatever, just leave a review and subscribe to the podcast and tell a friend. We're out there slugging it away. Great guest today, another artist on today. And I was thinking about it as I was interviewing my guest today. My guest is Alvaro Nadio, and he is a artist out of Brazil, living in L.A. now with an amazing story and some amazing paintings. I mean, they just blew me away. I, once again, a win for Instagram turned me on to uh, some more fantastic art. So easy now. <laughs> Not easy, but like back in the day, you had to like stumble down a street look through a window like what's going on what are these people doing in here they got like beers in their hand or wine and cheese what is this an art opening and you go in and you're like who are these people what is this artist's name now you can just stumble along on uh, instagram during the covid lockdown and find somebody that is out there grinding which I think is fantastic. Uh, I, I can't even think of anything cooler than uh, people, you know, discovered from social media in a good way, using social media in a positive, uh, a positive way, instead of that negative way of like, oh, you have to ah. Anyway. I really thought about it too. I, I, I can't believe how important art is to me, especially during the lockdown. You're sitting in your house and if you got some art on your walls, you just feel better. Whatever it is, whatever you're into, album covers, uh, photography, abstract paintings. Uh, I, I don't know. It's just something that makes you feel at home when you have your art up on the walls. Anyway, this is a great episode. We had a special drop-in guest. We haven't had this guest in a while. The leaf blower showed up. Always, uh, always uh, comical when the leaf blower pops in on Let There Be Talk or The Grail. A little special, uh, special appearance. Uh, this episode is brought to you by my good friend, Mark Brunod. He has a podcast out. It's a brand new podcast called A Rock and Roll Rabbit Hole. A new weekly music podcast that takes a positive fanboy's deep dive on great songs, artists, and bits of songs that fall under random themes. Every episode ties in with YouTube interviews, facts, and stories. We're talking about stuff like songs about drugs, songs with F-bombs, cowbells from hell, and dead by 40. Each episode is a deep rabbit hole dive on songs with building intros, and you can subscribe and check it out on the Apple Podcast platform um, or Spotify or the website a rock and roll rabbit hole.com brand new episode just dropped episode four it is a deep rabbit hole dive on songs about drugs and you can subscribe and check it out on the apple podcast app on your phone spotify or the website once again a rock and roll rabbit hole go do it mark's a great guy all right, so real quick, um, check out Alvaro's um, Instagram. Fire it up right now, so as we're talking, you can, you can take in his art. It is so damn inspiring to me to look at this man's work and his story. It is A-L-V-A-R-O 
underscore N A D D E O. I'll do it one more time. A L V A R O underscore N A D D E O. This man has some insane artwork and I want the world to see it. The Holy Grail of art coming to you on the grail. Here it is. Alvaro Nadio. All right, here we are. Another episode of the grail with a fantastic artist, man. Introduce yourself. Hi, uh, my name is Alvaro Nadeo. I am 48 years old. I am from Brazil. I have been living in the U.S. for the last 10 years. And I'm kind of like a recent, uh, I, I, I started like uh, in the art path like uh, seven years ago. But I always had it in my background because my dad is an illustrator too. But I only started like uh, doing my own stuff like recently. So you just started like seven years ago painting? Uh, yes. Yeah. No, no, I'm lying. Uh, nine years ago, more or less. Wow. Wow. Yeah. wow. Yeah. And what were you doing before this? No, I have, I have always uh, worked in creative field i'm still working in in advertising but and and when i was a kid i always like painted a lot but but uh but i started i i i i never like pursued or practiced uh much uh so yes then then i i i started just for fun like nine years ago when i was living in new york it i i uh, it was my first watercolor i uh nine years ago uh but just for fun and uh and then it, it kept me like uh, uh in, I, I kept enjoying and 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 then I, I i did it more and more and more often and and then later probably around 2013 it's when i kind of like started doing like more seriously like a more professional approach meaning that i i i were, i was more disciplined into making it constantly and like consistently. You grew up what in Brazil, and then you moved to New York for advertising art. Is that what you were doing? Well, yes, a little more than that. Yes, I, I grew up in Brazil. Uh, I, again, just to mention, like having my dad as an illustrator and also working from home. So I had he had his studio inside our home. So I was like, later, if we talk about references, you, you understand this part. But then I moved, I, I, when I got to college, I studied advertising and that, that was the field that I went to practice and become a, a professional. So I worked in advertising and, and then later I moved to Peru to work in advertising Wow! In, yeah, in the year 2003. Then I lived there in Peru for eight years and then... Uh, uh, a friend of mine that, that which I got a co-worker w- with whom I worked in Peru. Later, he was in New York, and then he invited me to go to work over there in New York. I I moved to New York 2010. Then I have been here. I have been working in the U.S. always in advertising. I still do. I just changed, but then I changed agencies a couple of times. And so I lived in New York. I also lived in Tampa, in Florida. Tampa. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm here in LA for five years and a half. But oh, always, shit. You're yeah. in LA. Yeah. Where, where are you? I'm in LA. Ah, oh, cool. Damn, dude. We got we to gotta get a coffee and uh, yeah, shoot yeah, the yeah, shit. Sure. As soon as, as they open it, like probably go to an opening on a gallery, something like that too. Now, let me, let me get into this a little bit because uh, this is one of the beauties of Instagram. Not quite sure how I found you. If somebody sent it over to me or I stumbled across it in my, uh, you know, in that search mode, but I see your stuff. And it knocks me out when I first see it. And immediately I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, all right, this guy's probably a product of maybe 
the late 80s, 90s, hip hop meets street New York kind of. And then it turns out that you're from Brazil and, you know, it's it's none of that, which is incredible uh-huh. because what a lot of your stuff is, and I am uh, I loved looking at it, is got a definite street art fashion to it, you know? So let's get into how you got into these uh these this type of flavor like you know it's very american as far as uh like hipster kind of american thing you know it's 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 a combo of kind of our crumb meets uh you know like like 70s cartoony but not cartoony you know that realistic cartoon type of stuff it's it's incredible how what what was your inspirations yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it's it's really funny or interesting when this type of like subject uh, arises. So going going through parts is that that I find funny that you thought that I was from New York or USA, and then you find out I was from Brazil. But that has happened to me quite a few times, and I and I'm starting to understand that that some things are more universal than we think for right. different reasons. Like one. One can be the influence of the United States pop culture in other countries is one reason. And some other reasons are just universal and we are not aware. Like, for example, when I do, I, I have a few paintings of like hanging shoes on wires. Yeah, I love that. And that, that, that is kind of like universal. Some some guy here in LA say, ah, I, I, I really connect with this one. It looks like LA. And then the guy from Brazil, the same. And so some some things are just universal, and and but do maybe... Then again, like the street part of it is, it's I, I really would credit New York for it because I, I was, as I as I mentioned to you, when I started like developing and painting more, I was in New York, and the thing that I like the most about New York is how immersed we are in the street. In the in, like, I, I loved New York the fact that I would walk everywhere, and and when you walk. You see things and you, you take you it feel, all in. Yes. You take it yes, all yes. in. I lived in New York and too. I realized that my joke writing got better because I'm taking in sensory overload of people and buildings and subway and art and music. Just walking down the street, you're hearing music and and bodegas and and people's chatter. That gets the motors running. And I love that more than anything in life. And, you know, growing up, it was frowned upon to walk. You know, you're like, oh, this guy walks. He's poor, you know, especially in LA. But now, if I live in the neighborhood, the first thing is, is it walkable? That's the first thing I want to know. Yeah, yeah, yes. I, I guess there's some kind of probably we, we are the same in that in that part that we are uh, excited by observation. So, yeah, yes, I, I and uh, I agree totally with you that New York is a place for that. That uh, I I used to I, I, I again I was working at an advertising agency and I, uh, first year or two that I was there when I had a lunch time and I could escape, I would just walk like uh, without aim like aimlessly i would walk for half an hour 40 minutes and take a subway back to the agency but i didn't even knew where i was going because anywhere that i could walk i would be like bombarded with cool stuff uh and, and random stuff and uh yeah the, and that's i think that's why i get this love for the texture for the for the the, the objects that discarded like it started like painting trash or or things and just yeah, and uh, just going back to your, uh, you had a question before that one that was about the references and the cartoon and the Air Crumb, Art Crumb, Robert Crumb, uh, which I agree and I can see the connection. And that's where the part that I, that I, that has to do with my dad or the influences is because as I, as I told you, I, I, I grew, I was born 1972. And so, Early 80s, I was like, my dad was an illustrator. And at that time, no, we didn't have internet. We didn't have Google. So all his references were in the magazine format. Right, right. So, so he had many magazines, including, and my favorites at that time were Mad, Heavy Metal, 
and later Playboy. So he had all of those magazines there, and I was just consumed like a lot of that. And even like uh, even other magazines, they had a lot of illustration at the time. In the 80s, if you get a magazine from the 80s. Oh, big the, time. The articles. Especially Playboy with the cool cartoons, those cartoons that those guys would draw. Everything, like every article, if it's the article about technology, they had, you had an illustration uh, about it. Like, But uh, anyway, what I'm just trying to say is that uh, I get a, a lot of those cartoon or the illustration because I was reading a lot of, reading, no, just looking at the images of a lot of magazines uh, from an early age. And yeah, those, those magazines, Mad, Heavy Metal. You and you're obviously a uh, music freak too, because a lot of the paintings have Iron Maiden or album covers, that type of stuff. So, and Brazil being a huge metal, uh, you know, I mean, metal is massive in Brazil. Were you growing up on like Kiss and Maiden and ACDC and that stuff? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Again, like uh, as I as I mentioned before. The U.S. has a big influence in culture in other countries and music, music and movies probably the biggest ones. So yes, I used to listen to a lot of uh, uh, music from the U.S. and at an age that I, I really liked, like uh, Metallica, Iron Maiden, be even before like Beastie Boys. It's funny you say Beastie Boys because when I look at your art. It makes me feel the Beastie Boys, Paul's Boutique. Mm -hmm. It makes me feel that. Over any other thing, when I look at your art, I feel this is Beastie Boys influenced in some way, maybe way in the back of, of, of your brain or whatever, but it really, really has a great hip hop flavor. No, it's also the time frame because when you look up a painting of mine, it, it reminds or takes you a lot of those elements is are like from the eighties, uh, early nineties. So and also like elements of music like the boombox, turntables, uh, some some brands. But but yes, and and again like this mixture, uh, yeah, of street and urban elements with some nostalgia my own nostalgia i love to like add stickers like for example if there is a place sometimes i, I throw a lot of stickers because i remember that's my memory my nostalgia when i was growing up and uh, as a teenager uh yeah like having being able like decorating your window with all the stickers you could get at that time a lot of like surf and skateboard uh, brands like we, we would like to consume those brands and as a, again as a teenager you are so influenced by those kinds of like yeah because at that time you are figuring out who you are and you use clothes as a way of trying to say who you are or identify with a group of people so that 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 stays with you forever right so i can a uh, uh, part of uh, when i'm painting I'm having fun and I'm having fun by in two ways, kind of like of this beautiful nostalgia and at the same time creating a narrative of a new situation. So I, I like, I, I believe that when I'm painting a situation like that, I'm, I'm imagining one character and this character is half autobiographical and half fiction. So, but it, but it, it, it again, like, it's always like telling a story because uh, I, uh, uh, the elements that I put there, they seem to have a story. For example, it's something that, like, for example, the one that you have on the background, that there's a Volkswagen bus, right. the combi. You know that 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 red door didn't was like originally like that. So you have to figure it out to understand there is a story behind that. Like at some point, he lost the door, he had a crash or something, and then he had so something happened. That's what I meant. Or on the wall, there was something written that was covered again in the other like beige color. So yeah. <laughs> thanks. There we go. What I'm just trying to say is that if you I, I create stories, I don't even know like the whole story, but I but you see that there is a story, something happened in that in that place. And, how does this start to happen for you? Uh, you're in New York and you decide I'm going to start painting. 
Do you paint one and get it up on Instagram or how do you start to get some traction? How does this happen? It was very organic and very, I, I think I'm really lucky that I had uh, no pressure on myself or no clear objective. I was just honestly just doing to enjoy myself. Uh, I started like just painting because I, f I started doing and I, I noticed that it relaxed me. It was a way of like, sometimes in the agency was not like a very easy or like it was stressful. So when I got home and I could like, when I'm working in advertising and other things, I'm working with clients, I'm working with other people. I have to take what they, sometimes I have just to do what they are telling me to do. Sometimes I have to listen and negotiate and you go get to your home and you do your own thing and you have no boss and you have no clients. So it was, it was a, a almost like a meditation. An uh, escape. I, it's an yes, escape. Yes. Yes. And also like the detail, like you get loose on doing just maybe some repetitive things. They're just creating a texture. You're not thinking you're just there. So, ah, so yes, uh, and, and what I'm tr just trying to say, because you asked me about the Instagram or the traction, I was never focused, focused on that. That was never, uh, probably if I were, I would have given up because it took a long time to happen, but I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't looking for it. So that, that, that's, that's the, I was lucky that was not, I was not chasing it because if I was, were chasing it, it. I probably would have given up because uh, it, it took a long time, but, but uh, it just was natural. I was just doing stuff and I, uh, as everything that we do with practice, I, I started getting better, getting better. And, uh, and I was finding my own voice and finding my own theme. And then later on, a few years later, I started like posting to Instagram. Uh, again, as, as some people, I had my purse. I had, in the beginning, it was my personal Instagram. I had like every kind, like pictures of my family, pictures of food, pictures of the city. Then later on, I just, I cleaned it up. I left it all art. And I then I started, then later on, after it was already like probably, I don't know, a thousand followers. Then I started like, okay, so I started to pay more attention to the algorithm and that, that like the, for example, like just the frequency of the posts. Um, so, yeah. So when you put, when you start putting some up, does, so do people reach out and say, Hey, are these for sale? Uh, no, not in the beginning, but no, I was just thinking about get, because then later I, I, I started like having the, followers like the instagram account uh, first and i was uh, approached by galleries later but it didn't it did not happen because of instagram it 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 it, it came from another way oh oh from like a, an agent or something no uh i actually it was so um in the beginning like when i was uh, in tampa was when like um, probably of 2013 to 2015 when I told you that I was, I just myself started to be more disciplined and taking more seriously. First step I took was look for uh, open calls for group shows. Like I, I started like Googling and finding stuff, uh, small galleries that they were doing like a group show and they had open calls. So you could submit your piece and they would take it or not. That was the first step that I did. And I got into like, I got accepted into a few of those galleries. So that was my first contact with showing my art at galleries. Then later on, 2015, 2016, I moved to LA. And then I, I was in at my workplace at the advertising agency. And I overheard a guy saying that he was opening a gallery. Uh, and I was friends with him just of saying hi, and, but not like friend of chatting or talking. So then I, I, I approached him, oh, hey, I overheard you were talking about gallery. I paint too. I want to share with you. I show it to him. He was just opening the gallery. He, he, so he liked my stuff and he, he opened a, a really a, a small gallery in Inglewood in, in LA. Wow. And for his, opening show, for his opening show, he did a show with four artists and he showed my, I was one of the four artists we 
who opened the gallery. And then someone saw my art at that gallery in Inglewood and showed it to Andrew from ThinkSpace, which is a bigger gallery. And then Andrew from ThinkSpace contacted me. So, so and then ThinkSpace is the, the gallery that I have been working more often with whom we made a few group shows and even museum shows. So we're kind of like partners. Uh, but yeah, it, it came from there, not from Instagram, from right. showing from showing at the smaller gallery in Inglewood. Uh, and just because I overheard the guy talking at my agency about yeah. it. Now, Think Space, uh, where are they located at? In uh, downtown or something? In Culver City. Culver City. Culver wow, City, yeah. so yeah, yeah. cool. They just, they, just, they just moved to a new and better and bigger space, but it's still in Culver City. When you start showing your stuff, is it all selling out right away? I mean, this stuff is a knockout, so people have got to be eating it up. Uh, yeah, the first shows, they sold a lot, especially because I had an approach of just pricing low. Yeah. So the first shows, they, 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 they were like all sold out. Then later on, I started like increasing the prices, and uh, yeah, I'm still like I, I have a few and so like probably five or six pieces yet to uh, uh, available, but I think it's because I'm figuring out this price point. I'm just like raising it, uh, but yes, in the beginning, the first ones they were like sold out uh, because i don't know they people liked and they were like priced in the lower part of the scale now are you doing this full time and have left the art agency the ad agency no i'm still working at the agency and i'm and i'm working on this like uh as a side side project right yeah now what are the sizes of these paintings because i haven't seen them in person are they like eight by ten are they 11 by 16 are they huge are they like todd shore giant stuff no 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 yeah they are, they are from from small to medium uh and by small i uh, i don't know some pieces are nine by nine gotcha then some other like I, I painted a lot of the I, I have a series of cards that is the shopping cart and a construction on top I have painted like 20 of those and they are 12 by 24. This, 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 this 12 by 24 is what I consider a medium size, like uh, for, for myself. Right. And that is the, the size that I paint most often. I have done a few bigger ones, but, but yeah, uh, yeah, I'm still, sometimes when I do a, a really like big to me, which is medium for other artists, if they have too many details, it kind of like uh, it takes too long to paint, and I'm and I was trying not to do because I like to be excited about a painting, and those big one with too many details, by the end I was just feeling like uh, wanting to finish it. Yeah, so, yeah, my God, this so thing's taking forever. For other size, let me ask you the process of your painting. Is it pens? Is it uh, oil is it uh what what is the process of your uh painting style uh the process the whole process of the of a painting is that i sometimes i i have an idea and i just post it just like it's just a, it's my first step is just to put it somewhere just not to forget about it and usually it's a post it and it's like very like just a rough then I can say that I start the composition on the computer. The, uh, I study in, the, in some 3D software and Photoshop. I study the composition. I create some of the elements on the 3D software. Then I go back to the paper uh, where, I, where I add everything, like, for example, like everything that is texture. Uh, well, it, it's all done on paper. What I'm just trying to say is that the part that I do on the computer is more is, is more the composition, uh, perspective, proportions. Like the layout, you mean? Yes, but what I don't do on the computer is manage colors, manage light, and manage textures. That's all happened on the paper, and most times they happen like uh, without study. Like I, I'm just... I'm just like mixing and, 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 and colors, for example, like deciding colors on the fly uh, and the light, I do it on the paper without previous study, textures the same. So 
Yes, it, it is just a quick sketch, just to remember, Photoshop and 3D to decide on the composition, going back to paper where, where the interesting part happens, which is light, color, and texture. And are you using pens or paint? It's water, watercolor. Watercolor. Wow, rad. Yeah, watercolor. Everything wow. is watercolor. Wow. And, and the watercolor has this, this character. I don't use white. I, don't, I have no white. So everything that I want to white, I have to protect and save it from the paper, which is like an, an added layer of difficulty. Do you, but, but yes, that's how watercolor is. For, for good and bad. I, I, there's some aspects that watercolor is very, is great and that I love it. But it's challenging because it doesn't allow to correct. You cannot paint over watercolor like, no, yes. And, and once it's there, like, especially if it's, if it's, uh, you can, it's, all, it's impossible to go lighter over, over dark, which you could in acrylic or oil. You, you can you have something dark and you paint over and and it covers but watercolor doesn't cover uh, so it's i think it's just a, a leaf blower oh these <laughs> fucking leaf blowers god i hate those yeah. guys they ruin yes. the podcast <laughs> yeah, these guys so are I... zoom killers i call them zoom killers yeah. <laughs> yeah. i i i yeah how many paintings do you do a year it's about, I don't know, 15, 16. Wow. Wow. You're going to step it up this year and do more, you think? Uh, I don't, I don't, uh, no, I think it's more or less the same. Yeah. Uh, I, I do, I, 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 I have like my calendar and I'm like, uh, my next solo show is 2022. So I kind of like have some time. I do have a couple of group shows that 2021, but I'm not. I uh, I think this is the time where where I have the most time between shows. But yeah, no, I'm I'm planning on painting more or less. This um, it's not it's not like about planning. Also, it's just the amount of paintings that naturally come come out. I'm always doing and working, and not not driving myself crazy and not like being lazy neither like being the more or less uh in a good a good rhythm who do you who do you look at as uh some of your inspiration r crumb are you into robert williams and that whole juxtapose scene or or what do you what do you look at covers of course yeah like uh, as i as i told you before i love all these like uh magazine part like uh like the guys in the big like Mo moebius you know jir moebius for yeah. example I, I really right but then later when i was uh in new york i i, I went to I, I went a lot to museums right there over there like the metropolitan moma whitney and i i i always i have always like loved like edward hopper uh andy warhol i like it too some yeah robert indiana which has like more graphic stuff robert rauschenberg with the compositions and the combines it's a mix also i i do look at like contemporary stuff like the what you just mentioned juxtapose high fructose guys um yeah i i, I am i am a huge art consumer that's my favorite entertainment was going to galleries or museums yeah and i i, I love seeing art and yeah, like from 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 Norman Rockwell too. I love Norman Rockwell. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, so I, yeah, those are my favorites. Like from Norman Rockwell, Edward Hopper, Edward Hopper, Andy Warhol, Ed Bruce, like those guys. I like that Warhol show last year in New York was insane. Yeah, that yeah. thing was epic. Did you go yeah. to that? The one in the Metropolitan. It was incredible, man. Yes, yeah, it yeah, was. Yeah. I mean, they had them yeah. all. They had them yeah. all there. Yeah, 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 yeah. God. Yeah, another. And it's funny, like uh, another great one that I caught in the Metropolitan was, and it's kind of like a, uh, the Alexander McQueen show. The, oh, the guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was amazing too. But it's all kinds of influences and whatever you can like. Everything is good. Like uh, meaning that Alexander McQueen. 
he's doing fashion. The but fashion at the same time, king. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that show was unreal. Yeah, yeah he had a lot of, of punk too. So that punk aspect of him was like, uh, I connected to. But yeah, having, when you are in New York and you have access to all the, all of that, like it's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. You get inspired to work. Well, LA has an amazing scene too of uh, yes, the art. Yeah. I mean, LA is really where I learned about, you know, late 80s of that whole juxtaposed scene uh starting with the guns and roses album cover i've talked about it hundreds of times i think there's a lot of great uh galleries here that support that stuff too because yes. there's a lot of people that yes. have uh taste in outside the box art they don't just want to get the you know standard art that you've seen your whole life like if i walked into a gallery and saw your pieces up there i would lose my mind i'd be like oh my god and I have a different taste than the guy next door to me. So uh -huh. LA and New York have, have it all. You're going to yes, find it. Yeah, you're going to yeah, find yeah. it. And you don't even know that you're looking for it until yes. you walk into that gallery and go, who is this guy? And that is exactly what happened when I saw your art. I was like, this Thank guy, you. I mean, I saw the one with the helicopter and stuff. I go, this is like apocalypse now, yes, that, you that's know? It. Yeah. And then the other one with the Trans Am hood, I was like, this, this is the shit right here. Just the Trans Am hood is such a piece of iconic art. When you think about it growing up, Iron Maiden Eddie album cover of the killers. It, this, uh, it's just a constant flow, like you say, and it locks into who we are growing up. And, you know, the Puma logo, the Nike swoosh, the mm -hmm. the everything about it the op shorts a dog town skateboard anything it's just yeah. crazy how much great visual art was out there growing up the lunch boxes those ones you'd have as a kid any of that uh -huh. evil knievel yeah. you know yeah i have a helmet like this. yeah right right so on, on one of them you have no idea growing up how much you're consuming until somebody like you throws it up on a painting and you walk in and you go, wow, look at that v 68 VW bus <laughs> with the <laughs> fucking cool loft, <laughs> old rundown factory behind it that someone probably lives in now that builds guitars. You know, it's like that kind of yeah, thing yeah. goes through yeah. my mind, you know? Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm happy that you like you, you are doing like you're constructing a narrative, like creating or filling the gaps of what's not said. But that's that's what I find it. Uh, it's fun to just create a, a part of a narrative. And we every everyone, there's a part we connect with the elements that we like and share and have a nostalgia for. And then you create the, the whole the whole story behind what's go happening inside, who is there, what he's doing, and just what you after before that you mentioned about LA, and I agree with you that I think LA has m more of those galleries that are showing high fructose juxtaposed stuff. Maybe New York is what they call blue chip, more of the blue chip galleries, right? But I think that LA has more of this low brow scene, big which, time, big yeah, time, yeah. Which which I I I love it, yeah. I love it too. I look at your art and I figure somehow I'm going to work with you on something, a shirt. Uh, you know, if I shoot a comedy special, the backdrop, something is going to happen between the two of us because I just love your art and I want to get it out there. And I think it's, uh, it's mind blowing. Um, and I, I can't thank you enough for doing the show. I'd love to own one of your pieces. So we will talk. And uh, let's tell everybody where we can find it. It's on Instagram, and the spelling is A L V A R O Alvaro. Yes, Alvaro. Yes. Yeah, Alvaro. Uh -huh. Alvaro uh -huh. Nadio. Yes, Nadio. Yeah, Nadio. Alvaro. Yeah. Alvaro Nadio. Uh -huh. Nadio. Yeah. You gotta yeah, say it fast, right? Alvaro Al Nadio. Yeah, I was, yeah. I say Alvaro Nadio. <laughs> but that's, but I, I that's my my Brazilian or Portuguese accent, Alvaro Nadeo. It's funny because some people like when they when they bring their name foreign names to the US, sometimes yeah. they they adapt this the the sound. But I I don't I like I just say like uh, it is. Uh, uh, but yes, uh, sometimes people make it easier to to 
how to pronounce it in English, but I just kept it as, as it is. A-L-V-A-R-O underscore N-A-D-D-E-O is his Instagram. This man is a, a genius at what he does. And I think anybody that listens to this show is going to understand how great this is because most people listening to the show have great taste. But uh, I love I love that painting, man. And I love all your paintings, the Trans Am, the golf carts, the, the shoes from the wires. Uh, everything about it is just beautiful, man. So I wish you the great success. And let's stay in contact. Sure. And we will eventually work together on something, cool. maybe a yeah. shirt or something, you know, cool. uh -huh. um, and we'll figure that out. It'll be great. Thank you so much. And uh, you got a website or anything? Yes, I do. It's uh, yeah. You can Google my my name again, like Al Al A L V A R O, N A D D E O. But yeah, I think that the Instagram is a better way to. I I have been, I keep the Instagram more updated than the web page. Okay. But yeah, yeah. Thank, thanks a lot for for inviting me. It's a, it's really cool to talk about uh, the art. It's something that I'm interested in doing. It's fun to do. Thanks a lot. Thank you for the compliments. And, and sure, let's try to do some, some stuff together. We'll do that for sure. We'll do that. I'll talk to you this week about it. And thank you for doing the show, man. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. It's a, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you, my man. I'll uh, Have a great weekend. Cool. Thank you. You too. I hope Teddy Flower didn't... Did it. Ruined oh, everything. No, nah, don't worry about it. I'll work around that. It's, uh, I mean, yeah, we're all good. Cool. Yeah, s send me links later. I to, will. To, to this. Yeah, I want to, I want to, I want to catch up your previous ones. I haven't, I haven't had the chance yet. And I'm, 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 uh, I, I listen to podcasts a lot. Yeah. So, well, I have two. I have two. One's called Let There Be Talk, and that's mm -hmm. like almost 600 episodes, nine years. And this is the new one called The Grail, and it's dedicated to artists and uh, makers and uh, uh -huh. builders and cool. people that work outside the box, you know? Uh, maybe they build choppers, maybe they make denim, maybe they are a painter, uh, uh -huh. anything, you know? So cool. I, I love that stuff, and I love people finding out about them. Cool. Yeah. I wish, please share with me. I want to want to listen to them. I'll send them both cool. to you. Cool. Thank you, my man. Thank you. Let's keep in touch.